I'll be showing you four TikToks related to depression, and I'm going to respond to the content with my therapist thoughts and personal reactions as well. But first, I'm Ashley Mason, a licensed mental health counselor, and I make videos on mental health, and I'm starting to make reaction videos like this because there's so much misinformation out there that I'd like to clarify what I can for you. Now let's get into the first TikTok. I think one of the most dangerous depressions is high functioning depression, where you still go to work, you still go to school, you're still functioning, you still do your job, you're living your life, you're paying your bills, but you are dying inside and nobody takes it serious because they're like, oh, she's still getting everything done and she's still smiling. This one's on high functioning depression. I wouldn't say someone who looks like the person she describes is higher functioning and therefore you should worry about them more. I just say the way they cope and function is different from others, but the signs of their pain are there. They just look different. To be honest, I don't love the high versus low functioning split. It feels unnecessarily divisive, even a bit narcissistic my depression style is better than yours it's not a clinical term and it's not something i've ever found useful what is useful thinking of depression in terms of two types and this is from the psychodynamic diagnostic manual the two are anaclytic and introjective anaclytic depression is is a type where the person feels great loss and more tends to get more depressed over loss of people and relationships they get their self-worth from their relationships and their connections so it will be hard for them to go to all the other go do all the other high functioning stuff when they're depressed you could see them jump into a new relationship of some kind which for them would mask their depression and you wouldn't see it you wouldn't see their depression in that case necessarily like you would if they didn't jump into a relationship the introjective type of depression is more about self-worth through achievements this type is going to be more affected by something that gets at their channels of self-worth like work and hobbies achievement school things like that those things that boost their self-esteem even if they've lost someone they may still fairly easily go on with the things that give them self-worth, which can mask their depression, but the downside is they often don't get help from others that would give them a boost. They're more independent in that way. So you're not gonna see it in the same way. But with either type, there are kinds of masking, but you just may not see them respond as heavily to the same triggers. Anaclytic types have to be helped to still find a sense of self in the face of loss of others, and they need a lot of help in going to do those things that will be more independent in terms of helping them feel good about themselves. Introjective types have to be helped to feel the loss of others and feel the helplessness of it instead of directing all their feelings into their usual sources of self-worth. Now, on to the next video. The difference between depression and sadness is sadness is just, you know, from happenstance. Whatever happened or didn't happen for you, or, you know, grief or whatever it is. And depression is your body saying, fuck you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this, this avatar that you've created in the world. There is a this one is on Jim Carrey. He's talking about depression and sadness. And what he says about sadness, spot on. Sadness can even be a gift reminding us we're alive and that something mattered to us. A lot of times if you're depressed, you've tried to wall off the sadness which has left you in the numbness of depression. Once you let yourself feel it, it can feel so much better than the emptiness of depression. Now, his take on depression, that it's your body's way of rejecting a life you're pretending to live or a character you're pretending to be, I completely agree with the essence of what he's saying. Depression can be the result of living a life where you're not real. Maybe you're playing a role, doing what others want instead of what you want, 
or you're burying emotions that you think aren't acceptable. But all that pretending cuts you off from your true self, the self that will give you life and energy. Pulling out of this space takes work. Therapy can help, but even on your own, try to reflect on what you might be avoiding, avoiding thinking and feeling. If you think you're not avoiding anything, try a little bit harder. If you're feeling depressed, there's likely something you're still pushing away or ignoring. Trace it back. When did it start? What impact might you have overlooked? And remember, real strength comes from letting yourself have all your authentic thoughts and feelings. And just as an aside, like if you are someone who, like if you were to say to me, no, I lost someone and I'm feeling all of it all the time. I, I know exactly why and I don't need to go back and figure out why that is. Okay, some of that is fair enough. But there's also a line of thinking here where that's possible where you might actually not be feeling it all the way. You might actually not be letting yourself feel the full depth of the pain like where you just let yourself go into whatever that is, as scary as it might be, but you may be avoiding feeling that absolute loss because you think you can't tolerate it or you need to move forward or whatever. This is what I mean about like something gets left behind even sometimes if you think you're feeling all of it. Now for the next video. Oh, as a psychiatrist, here are five things I would do if you struggle with depression. Number one, take our brain health assessment, brainhealthassessment.com. I would exercise head to head against medication. Exercise equally effective at 12 weeks, more effective at 10 months. As a psychiatrist, if you're depressed, I'd check your labs. It's so important, check your vitamin D level, your thyroid, your ferritin levels, measure of iron stores, your omega-3 fatty acids. As a psychiatrist, if I was depressed, I'd make sure I was taking omega-3 fatty acids and saffron. So this brain MD psychiatrist guy, to be honest, this guy rubs me the wrong way, always has. He seems afraid of feelings and would like to believe that there are these simple ways to combat them. But let's break down the claims in this video. Take our brain health assessment. This leads you to his website where you can buy many, many supplements for your mental health needs like for anxiety and stress and sleep and relaxation, you name it. Conveniently, whatever the brain health assessment comes up with for you, he's got a product he can sell you. But here's the thing, no supplement or quick fix is going to address the root of your issues. It won't touch on childhood trauma or anything like that that might be causing your pain. Supplements and exercise can help you feel proactive, which can boost your mood, but they won't truly move the needle on deeper mental health issues. And his final line, don't believe everything you think. He thinks he's so clever, I swear. He says it like that's all there is to it. No advice on to how to actually handle those thoughts or where they come from. Bottom line, just don't rely on this guy for mental health guidance. Think of him like a functional medicine doc and not a psychiatrist who has really worked deeply with mental health patients. That's not, I don't think that's what he's done. With that said, let's move on to the last video. Taylor Paul, she's sad and misses being a savage. Thought I'd bring this one in since I have done a previous video on her. Taylor says she misses being a savage and captions it with, I'm tired of feelings, truly. And I get it. No one likes sitting with pain, admitting how trauma is affecting them. But honestly, if the pain is softening you and you're feeling all of it, you're on the right track. She's in therapy or was when the show aired, which 
could mean she's feeling safe enough to let those feelings in. That's massive. This is what actually helps you move forward. Sometimes we can fantasize about being savage to protect ourselves. It feels powerful for a bit, but it's just a way to stay stuck in the pain, ultimately. Acting like a tough, unbreakable SOB might feel good in the short term, but it ultimately prolongs your suffering. Why? Because you're faking it. And that disconnect only amplifies your negative feelings under the surface. Well, thanks for watching. Learn more here. Something else I've talked about. 